Hello everyone, it's Phil here. Welcome to another video. In this video we're gonna build a 486 computer. However, with a little twist, we're gonna use a couple of modern parts. Now, it's straightforward to just buy a ready-to-go 486 uh, with an AT case and all the vintage, original, authentic stuff. But as parts die, people are looking for alternatives. You might struggle finding an AT case or you don't trust the AT power supply anymore or you've got some issues with the storage. Old hard drives, they're loud, noisy, they might not be as reliable. So if that sounds like you, check out this video. You will learn a lot. We're going to use an ATX case, ATX power supply, compact flash cards, floppy emulators, and all sorts of things to put a 486 motherboard into a modern uh, computer case. I ran into some roadblocks, but that's all part of the journey, so I'm going to talk about that. And that has to do with getting the uh, power buttons and the turbo button going. But otherwise, it was actually a pretty smooth project and it should work straightforward. So we shall start with putting the motherboard into the case. And here we are with a fairly standard ATX case. It's from A1. It's a fairly cheap and nasty brand. I did swap out the power supply for a gigabyte just to have a bit of extra reliability. And standard ATX standoff, so nothing fancy. Now, the motherboard I'm using, and I'm just going to give a shout out to a Vogons member under the name of uh, Fipoa. He did a really good review on the Biostar MB8433 UUD. Dash A, I happen to have version 2, and I'm using an Intel DX4 uh, processor with 100 megahertz. So he did a really good write up on his motherboard. Um, a proper PDF, pages of pages of info, settings. Um, he's done, there's a bias, he's, he's done the latest bias, um, but also a modified bias that adds a few features. And this motherboard is one of the best, if not the best, motherboards out there. It's got a lot of really cool features. First off, it's one of the few motherboards for 486 with a working PS2 connector, so you can use an optical PS2 mouse. It supports uh, lots of cache. I'm just going with 256 kilobyte of cache. I found almost no benefit of going with 512, and the chip's a lot easier to find. It's got four ISA slots, three PCI slots, a primary, a secondary ID channel, there's a floppy interface, two serial ports, a parallel port. What else has it got? I had to do a few mods. I added uh, one jumper over here to get more FSB options, so you can go, go a little bit lower, or overclocking if, you, if that's something you're into. I'm not, um, I'll just leave everything stock. And the other mod I had to do was regarding the real-time clock. Um, I, I desoldered the original. It was flat, and on this motherboard, if the battery in the RTC is flat, you can't boot. And I put it in a socket, and I got some Dallas RTC chips from ebay and put one in and the board is working beautifully it takes all the major chips the standard dx dx2 dx4 from intel amd everything so very very good board so we're almost done here let me just put in the last screw and here we have one of the first roadblocks it's the issue with the io shield and there is an io shield which has a, a cutout for the keyboard connector um, but this motherboard also has a PS2 connector. So what you can get, you can get um, solid I.O. shields and then just drill your own holes or holes or cut them out. Um, but me personally, I just refuse to, I've refused to pay 20 bucks for an I.O. shield plus, I don't know, 20, 30 shipping, 30, 20, 30 shipping from the U.S. So I'm just going to leave, leave a, a hole here. It's not the prettiest thing. So it really depends on um, your taste and uh, whether or not you are cool with that this would just be in the back of the computer so really it's not a big deal but as i said you can buy a solid io shield from ebay and modify it yourself i will put a link in the description okay time to insert some cards we only written in two cards a graphics card and a sound card because everything else is integrated for the graphics card i'm using an s3 trio 64 v plus it's a great pci graphics card very compatible with dos games and also has top-notch performance but the compatibility is really the highlight of this card and then we have a world premiere i'm using the dream blaster x1 a prototype from Certishop from belgium uh, a new wavetable board with lots of funky features now i will do a proper review on that card very soon um, if you're interested in having certain 
games featured in that video, do let me know. Just drop me a line or email me. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing a review on that. And the card it's on, it's a standard Sound Blaster 16, nothing uh, special. Um, I've used the Audition 32 in the past, but uh, time to switch it up, use some of my other gear that I've got, and why not use a Sound Blaster 16. So I'm just gonna use the wrong screws for this one. Gotta go with the bigger ones. Now I'm gonna leave the slot covers no, um, out just yet. I've got spare slot covers, yeah. But I want to make sure that the machine actually fully works before I insert all of those. Okay, the next roadblock is the power supply. Now we're using a modern ATX power supply, which has the this type of connector. However, the motherboard is an AT power supply. So while I'm just uh, cable tying this cable away, so it's not in the way. Um, I just want to talk quickly about AT power supplies. They're old. Um, they've got lots of capacitors that might be past their lifetime, so you're gonna ask for trouble using an old power, AT power supply. Now you can repair them, but not everyone has the skill or the tools and parts to actually do that. Much better way is using a modern ATX power supply and then an ATX to AT adapter. And I've got one of these here. So the way this works, that's where you ATX power supply goes in, so I'm just going to hook that up, like so, and it comes with its own power switch. So you push it in, it's on, push it out, it's off. However, we're going to use a different one um, to mount to the front panel, which I'm going to show you later. So these two, just going to make sure that the uh, black ones are in the center together and then you just insert them into your motherboard. That's the first one, let's go to the second one. Now I'll put links in for that ATX to AT power adapter. This is the more expensive one which also has a converter for negative 5 volts. If that's something you, you need then uh, get the more expensive one but there is a cheaper model. Okay so now I want to talk about actually mounting a power switch to the front. Um, it has to be, I don't know what the, what the name is, I'll look it up, um, where the on state stays uh, on when you push it in and you have to push it in and release it to actually turn the machine off. So it's not just a toggle button, it's um, a button that actually stays, stays pushed on. And it's got a connector here where you can just remove it, so we're actually not going to use this button anymore. And I've sold it myself one of those, so you can get a, a modern button, you can push it in. Um, so I just used an existing cable and soldered it onto it. And this one also has an LED light, so I soldered a 12 volt connector onto it. So let me just wire all that up, that goes here. And we need a 12, just uh, a look. Probably use this one. And that goes in like all the way around. Like that. Alrighty, let's fire it all. Let's hook it up and see if it actually turns on. Okay, sorry about that. I had to do a cut. The way I soldered the, con uh, the switch on, um, it was reversed, so it would turn on when it was uh, pushed out and it would turn off when it was pushed in. But it's working now, so if I toggle that button, the light goes on, the machine runs, and there's an you hear the post beep soon. So there's something wrong. I'm going to have a look at when we plug in the monitor. It'll give us an error message. It might be keyboard or some other some other error. But otherwise, it's working. Um, you might be able to see the uh, fan spin. So when I push it in again, the machine powers off. I'm just going to wait for that fan to stop spinning. You should be able to see it now. So that's all working, ready to go. Now with the turbo button, I got another one but without a light but I don't know if it was the soldering or something else but it stopped working so it, it doesn't stay pushed in anymore and that is a problem because the way uh, this motherboard works is if the uh, turbo headers um, on the front header panel um, are connected the machine will slow down and if it's disconnected which is by default it will be in in the fast mode yeah so 
Uh, I can't show you the demo, so what I'm going to do is just hook up that other switch. So I'm just going to use that switch that I'm not using anymore, just as a tempor temporary measure, and hook it up to the front panel connector for the turbo. Should be these two, these two pins. Now I'm just going to let those uh, hang outside of the case. I, this is my only ATX case I've got at the moment, so I don't want to drill any holes into the uh, front panel. But that's what, what you basically have to do. So you just find out what the diameter is of, of, of the switch. And then you can use one of those slot covers for the five, um, five and a half inch, uh, five and a quarter inch drives, yep. Yeah. Or maybe drill a hole somewhere else in the case. But I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to deface my case uh, that much because I'm using it for a lot of other projects. Um, so I'm just, this is just a demonstration that that thing actually works. Okay, let's talk about storage. I'm gonna use a couple of things. First, as always, my good old uh, floppy emulator from GoTech. I can highly recommend it if you haven't got one. These are cheapest chips and they do such a great job, are very reliable. So I'm just gonna insert uh, that one into the front. Next up, we have the optical drive. So I'm just going to jump on that to slave. I'm going to try to use one ID ribbon cable on the primary channel. If that doesn't work, then I have to use a, a second one. So this is jump to slave. It goes right at the top. And for the hard drive storage, we're going to go with a compact flash solution. So I've got this drive bay from StarTech. StarTech is a really cool company. They've got all sorts of odd things that no one else seems to make. Um, they're not the cheapest, but if you want, for example, one of those, uh, a front panel CF bay, uh, there's really no other company that does it. And the way it works, you just pop these in from the front. So I'm gonna use a four gigabyte CF card and you're good to go. Okay, I'm just gonna do the other side. Make sure everything is nice and secure. Okay, so it's all wired up. I did end up having to use two RDA ribbon cables because the compact flash adapter is so far towards the front that the distance was just too short to plug it into the RDA connector. So you might have to find like a super long RDA cable if you're building uh, a 386 or a similar machine and you just have a single ID channel. I've also wired up the power. Um, I didn't have an audio lead that has the connector for the Sandblaster 16, but that's not a big deal. We all know how audio CDs work. So what we're gonna look at now is, uh, I'm just gonna start hooking everything up and I'm gonna use two adapters. I'm gonna use one for the keyboard so I can plug in a modern PS2 keyboard and I'm going to use another adapter for the mouse so I can connect a USB mouse. Okay, everything is wired up. I hooked up the monitor, the speakers, PS2 mouse, uh, sorry, PS2 keyboard and a USB mouse. So let's fire it up. So we can see the graphics card message on the screen and there was also the post beep and here is the BIOS. So I'm just gonna rearrange a few things and then we're gonna do some BIOS tweaking and install and install MS-DOS. I'm gonna go with plain MS-DOS 6.22. Okay, we're back, so we're just gonna turn on the unit. I noticed that the light doesn't work anymore. I guess I should have used the resistor for the LED. I kinda assumed it was integrated, but looks like it wasn't. So I also had an issue with the CF card, the 4G card wasn't working anymore so I used the 2G card and that worked fine. It's just the it's just what happens when you uh, muck around with a lot of stuff, things die. Okay, in the BIOS, um, usually what I do is just load the BIOS defaults and I go into hard drive auto detection and make sure that the hard drive is picked up. I cancel all the other ones. They're not important. Um, on the chipset, I usually disable the COM ports and the parallel port. Everything else I kind of leave the way it is. It shouldn't really 
everything is auto, that should work fine. We're going to boot from the C, of C drive, I've already installed uh, MS-DOS, the sound card drivers and a couple of games, so let's just boot and make sure it all works. Okay, here we are, ready to go. Let's just run some benchmarks. 3 Bench. Sixty-two point two, and let's see if that turbo button works. There you go. So it's slowed down a little bit. Um, that's fully working. So yeah, if you find if you can find another button like the one I showed earlier and mount it to your front panel. So that's the idea I had to mount them uh, here, but these use like a mesh design, and I really didn't want to uh, stuff them up, so I just left it. Let's run a PC Player Benchmark. So 17.3 for PC Player Benchmark. So we have 2048 real ticks. I'll do the math and put the frames per second onto the video. And we have 9.6 frames for Quake. So we're just going to try out a few games. Just going to configure the sound options. We're going to go with General MIDI, Sound Blaster 225.1.8. That's all working fine. Let's just try one more game. Uh, Raptor. Music. Oh, hang on. Music card. General MIDI. Sound. Sound Blaster It's all working fine. Let's just quit this game. Alrighty, that's it. Well, as always, if you enjoyed this video and if you're keen on, on seeing more of my videos, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Any questions, comments uh, down below. And if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Um, so just wrapping it up, it was fairly straightforward putting a 486 motherboard into a modern ATX case. Um, the main issue is, is the power supply. You need an ATX to AT adapter. Compact flash card is fairly standard. Um, if you want a front device, just go for the StarTech. There are devices you can put in the back, in one of the uh, slots at the, at the back, but then you have to reach around. Um, and the power switches. You need to definitely do some case modding to get the power and the turbo buttons going. Um, but that's all part of the of the journey. I just chose not to do that because this is my only ATX case and uh, ATX case, and I didn't really want to uh, drill holes in it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it was fairly straightforward. Um, I didn't plan the project before. Usually, I, uh, I built, I put everything together once just to make sure that everything works. But this was just shot in one hit, and me talking while doing it, and it worked really well. So, um, yep. Yeah. That's it for me, so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in one of my upcoming videos.